conference on endocytosis. Endocytosis could be bulk flow, which whatever is in there gets pinched off from the surface and uh, is used. And we see that in blood vessels where uh, serum components are uh, endocytose uh, from the lumen of the blood vessel and it transported uh, through the thin membrane, through the thin cell uh, out into the extracellular fluid. In contrast, receptor mediated endocytosis require a little more components. You have to have specific receptors, uh, coated pits, uh, clathrin provides that, uh, lysosomal fusion with endosomes, uh, and the recycling of the receptors. So the different components of it. And today we'll be talking about receptor-mediated endocytosis. So the objective is to reinforce uh, the notion of the interplay among receptors, cargo, uh, and actions uh, um, of the apical portion of the cell by considering defects uh, in the interplay. To use techniques we have discussed to analyze the process of endocytosis and to reinforce the idea that each step of a process is an opportunity for a disease. If we look at the, uh, the cell here, we see an, a, we see intestinal absorptive cell type cell, brush border on the surface, Cytosol is what's inside the plasma membrane that's, uh, that's not the nucleus. In the plasma reticulum, we can see with a rough in the plasma reticulum, rough uh, because of the ribosomes on the surface, smooth Golgi apparatus, uh, polyribosomes, free ribosomes, proxosomes, nucleus, and the plasma membrane. If we look at the plasma membrane with endocytosis, you can see uh, that there's an invagination. Uh, and that invagination is then um, associated with a, a coated pit where there is uh, something underneath the protein underneath the membrane that facilitates the pinching off that vesicle and then the vesicle lose its coat. We see it again. You have random receptors uh, placed in the membrane. They cluster and then you have a clathrin coat underneath that invagination making the so-called coated vesicle and then the coated vesicle uh, is then uh, removed. Uh, if you look at uh, this and you're a little man looking up uh, at the top of a cell, if you're inside the cell looking up, this is what you will see. These are the coated, uh, uh, coated pits that will become coated vesicles uh, when they pinch off uh, all together. But this is brought about by clathrin, which is a uh, three unit protein there that forms uh, uh, this structure uh, that facilitates uh, pinching off of a flat uh, plasma membrane and this is the way it looks uh, if you look if you were inside the cell looking out toward the uh, through the cell membrane uh, and you're able to see the invaginations from the uh, from the surface of the cell so basically uh, the way it works is you have these clathrin uh, proteins which bind to a flat plasma membrane and it starts to invaginate, becomes a coated pit, and then it pinches off uh, totally. Now it's a coated vesicle and then it loses its coat. The clathrin is recycled uh, and you have cargo uh, located uh, in a uh, uncoated uh, vesicle. Uh, the coating and uncoating and the formation, basically the clathrin coat, allows a membrane to pinch off a vesicle is what it does. And it does it when it's going from the Golgi apparatus to the endosome or to the plasma membrane. Um, it starts out coat and it, then it loses its coat and then you get the fusion of the vesicle with the uh, early endosome, for example. Uh, and likewise, you can go from the uh, endosome to the Golgi apparatus by not taking empty cargo, just taking the membrane back and again pinching off from the flat membrane facilitated by the clathrin uh, coat. Uh, and so here we can see the process. We've got a rough in the plasma reticulum, Golgi, uh, and the three components. You either got the constitutive or you got the induced with a secretion. 
uh, or you have uh, uh, proteins that go into the lysosome. Uh, and each one of these, uh, the, the secretory proteins or those that are destined for lysosome, use a coated pit, uh, the clathrin coat, uh, to facilitate um, the formation of vesicles. And here we can see <coughs> the clathrin coat uh, from the Golgi apparatus. Here we see the Golgi apparatus in, right in through there. Uh, and here we see a coated vesicle. And we can see the different uh, components of the uh, of the protein there, the coat, and then the uncoated vesicle. No longer do we see the radioactive uh, beads or, or the beads associated with uh, with antibodies uh, for the for the clathrin. So clathrin could be seen here loose, could be seen around the vesicle and the coated vesicle, and then no longer can it be seen uh, in the uh, in the uncoated vesicles. Also, you might note that insulin receptors do not recycle where some of them recycling insulin does not because it's so important uh, to be able to continue to regulate uh, function. So basically, uh, you get a flat membrane, uh, you, a clathrin coats cause vesicle formation to occur. Uh, in order for us to visualize where the clathrin is, we have antibodies against clathrin, uh, and you have immunogold uh, particles. So you have antibody attached to the gold, uh, uh, would then attach to the target, in this case, would be cat clathrin. So these are the immuno goal, the same as this is what we see right here, uh, but what we don't see is the antibodies which is attached to uh, the clathrin that uh, coats this vesicle. And then whenever the clathrin is no longer around uh, the vesicle in these uncoated vesicles, uh, we no longer see the gold particles uh, around it when it's uncoated. So, in terms of, uh, of lysosomal um, sorting, um, you, you would, in the rough and plasma particular, we have mannose added to the proteins, and then they're phosphorylated. Of uh, uh, mannose six phosphate is is attached to the um, protein as it comes to the Golgi apparatus, and there it binds to the receptor, mannose six phosphate uh, receptor which is in the uh, membrane uh, of the uh, mature face of the Golgi apparatus. And again, clathrin coat uh, is involved in pinching this off to transport that, uh, that cargo and receptor uh, to this uh, uh, endosome. Endosome then has a, a lower pH. Uh, ATP is used to produce hydrogen, to pump hydrogen into there to lower the pH. At a lower pH, uh, the cargo, uh, which is the protein, uh, the lysosomal protein, and the receptor are separated. So they separate at a low pH. They bind at a high pH. Uh, and that yields the receptors that can be recycled. So with the membrane comes uh, more receptors uh, to be uh, recycled uh, in, this, uh, in this process. So as we're looking at uh, a regular cell, we can see the recycling where uh, membrane proteins go to the surface and then they're recycled. They could go back to the Golgi apparatus, for example. Uh, also, uh, you have receptors coming in here uh, associated with endocytosis and the, the early vesicles fuse with lysosomes and then ultimately uh, degradation. The third component is transcytosis, where something is transported uh, from the ap apical border uh, to the basal lateral border, and we call that transcytosis. And an example of transcytosis um, uh, is the um, uh, the production of antibodies in body fluids. So you get antibodies in secretions like uh, body fluids, like milk, uh, nasal fluid, tears, uh, cervical mucus, whatever you will get antibodies in the fluid itself and that's brought about by transcytosis. So we have receptors on the epithelial cells that secrete the milk, for example. <clears throat> they bind antibodies on the outside and they, with transcytosis, they transfer them into the lumen to get fluids, um, saliva, all the fluids of the body will have uh, antibodies associated 
uh, with them and it does it by this transcytosis. Now if we just take a look at an intestinal absorptive cell uh, and, and this view is where the cell is cut right through there so you have a little bit of Golgi apparatus not too much rough ER but right in through that region there. So this is a plasma membrane of two cells, this cell and that cell, this cell and that cell, this cell and that cell. So we see one, two, three, four different cells. There's a nucleus, nice Golgi uh, in this region. So we're right through several Golgi apparatus, there's an autophagic song uh, right there. Well, a higher mag of that will show you the rough in the plasma reticulum where you get the pinching off uh, of the vesicle. So you can see the pinching off of the vesicle right here, the smooth vesicle here is pinched off from this rough in the plasma reticulum and then those will be transport vesicles. Uh, and here we can see a coated vesicle. So these are coated vesicles. There's another coated vesicle right there, uh, which is, is facilitate the transport from the rough in the plasma reticulum to the, to the Golgi is these vesicles uh, and uh, and the coated vesicle which will facilitate that pinching off. <clears throat> Again, we can see the, the coated vesicles uh, right in through there. You can see the, the, the coat that is associated uh, with it. Now, uh, the, the receptor, endo, uh, receptor mediated endocytosis that we're talking about, we're talking about getting the uh, uh, LDL, the low density lipoprotein uh, across the membrane and that was a source of getting rid of cholesterol in the body. So you have cholesterol inside that uh, protein that, and then the protein take it in thereby it takes in the cholesterol. So basically what happens is you have the cell membrane and you have receptors are just put in there at random. And then when those receptors bind to the LDL uh, then they move to the coated pit this is a coated pit, the clathrin coat here now is going to make, make it pinch off. Uh, and so uh, where you have the uh, high concentration of receptors, uh, you will, they will have moved into the coated pit and then the clathrin coat pinches off the vesicle uh, and so no longer is it flat, it's round. Uh, you lose your coat uh, and then you have the vesicle with the, the cargo and the receptor that binds to an end, uh, early endosome, which has a little lower pH, and as you have a lower pH, the cargo uh, is released from the receptor, and the receptor is recycled, taken back up to the surface uh, to recycle another set of cargo, and the cargo uh, goes down and it meets a lysosome for degradation to uh, occur. So uh, basically what happens is you have uh, receptors for the LDL placed in the membrane, they bind to the LDL and then they move into the coated pits. But they need to have a coated pit binding uh, component of those and then they are internalized as the vesicle is pinched off. But there are some defects in the system. Instead of having a, a, a binding site, you may m be missing the binding site. And if this is the case, a defect would bind, the receptors would bind the LDL, but it would not internalize it because it didn't have a way of the receptor finding uh, the coated pit that was required uh, for it to uh, be able to be uh, internalized. Now, one of the things that we want to do in this, uh, um, in, in this conference is to double label things. <clears throat> uh, and here we see some double uh, labeling uh, that we occur. Uh, we have uh, uh, green uh, and we have uh, red uh, if the cells are green and red. Uh, green or red that just means they're single labeled. However, if the cell has both green and red at the same time, uh, that makes it yellow. And here we can see the yellow scent, which in this case it was a Sertoli cell, a nucleus, uh, and also it, it was involved um, in uh, proliferation. So if you look at a protein associated with cell division uh, and you have another cell of interest, if, if the, that cell was a Sertoli cell and it was uh, in the process of 
process of, of proliferation, uh, it would be co-localized, co-localized, coexist at the same time, red and green, and that would make the cell yellow. And so that's kind of what you are uh, looking for uh, in this conference. Now regarding considerations, which cellular components are involved in receptor mediated endocytosis? This is not bulk flow. There are several components that have to be required, that are required. What materials are required to double label cellular components? So you would have to have two different types of antibodies, maybe fluorescein, rhodamine, uh, and to have antibodies that are specific for the different things you want to co-label. Why do receptors recycle? And why do sometimes they do not? Uh, how does the pH influence the receptor cargo binding? And so in this particular conference, we have uh, some defects. We have receptor negative, uh, we have receptor defective, and internalization defective. And so you're supposed to take each one of these uh, and double uh, stain these to be able to see whether or not they have uh, clathrin coat or whether or not they have uh, receptors in a high enough concentration that you're able to visualize. Uh, and then it asks you um, uh, what is the function of what could happen in some cases that would prevent uh, you to be able to co-localize things. And then the final three and four questions relate to pH uh, and receptor cargo uh, binding. So the conference on endocytosis, uh, the objective was to reinforce the, inter the interplay among receptors of cargo and actions of the apical cytoplasm and considering defects. So you use defects to be able to visualize the different components in it. Then you want to use techniques to analyze endocytosis and to reinforce the idea that each step of a process is an opportunity for a disease. Thank you.